The first three MCU films were fairly grounded in reality and were more science fiction. However, Thor is the first movie that really delves into the whole fantasy aspect of the MCU, exploring magic and gods and deities and stuff like that. It's kind of hard to adapt Thor when you're trying to do a cinematic universe simply because when compared to Iron Man and Hulk, Thor is much more of a Shakespearean fantasy type of character that doesn't really clash well with the more science fiction characters. Despite all of these obstacles, Thor works. The plot is quite simple. Thor is going to be crowned King of Asgard when suddenly the Frost Giants break into the vault and try to steal an artifact. And because of this, Thor is really pissed off that his coronation was interrupted and wants to go to war with the Frost Giants. However, this line of thinking ended up causing a war between the Nine Realms, and thus Thor is banished because he is unworthy. Meanwhile, Jane Foster and a ragtag team group of weather scientists thing, I, I don't know, they never specify, meteorologists I think is the term? Whatever the term is, they discover the world of Asgard and all of the scientific properties that explain all of the fantasy elements. You could see that back then they were trying to make magic and science kind of be the same thing where magic is just science that isn't explained, but then that kind of gets retconned with Doctor Strange, so yeah, there is magic in this world. When Thor crash lands on Earth, he ends up losing all of his Thor powers and therefore has to learn the humility and humbleness that comes with being a king. And at this point, Thor begins his arc. While it is true that most of the fantasy elements that make up Thor aren't in the movie often enough, that's not the point. The point of the movie is to establish that all of the fantasy elements do exist within this world of science. And the only reason Thor was even banished to Earth is because his line of thinking was rather barbaric. He thinks that the only way to solve problems is by violence and tearing down his enemies to become stronger and fearsome and all of that stuff. However, to quote Odin, a true king must never seek out war, however, he must always be prepared for it. What he means by that is that, yeah, it is true that sometimes you gotta be barbaric in order to defeat your enemies, however, that's not always the solution, and sometimes the solution is just to be humble and diplomatic, because otherwise you're gonna end up like Hela. That was the lesson that Odin was trying to teach Thor, and throughout the movie, Thor suffers a ton of humility. However, it's good because he can learn from his mistakes and realizes why he's unworthy, and that he needs to be better in order to be a great king of Asgard one day. And it's not just Thor who ends up going through a character chain, there's also Loki. Now Loki has always been one for mischief, however, it's pretty clear that he always wanted to get the throne because he's always felt overshadowed by Thor. It doesn't help that he found out that he was adopted this entire time and that he never really was as guardian. and no matter what reason Odin brought out, Loki was just filled with rage. He wanted to make Odin proud and because of that it led to a darker path of wanting to become the one who unites all of the realms and stuff like that, but in his own dark twisted plans of killing a bunch of people. Loki and Thor are probably some of the most compelling characters in the movie, and while there are a bunch of other characters, none of them don't really get any development or they're not really as interesting as the main characters. Not even Jane Foster, the love interest, who's mostly into the science stuff and explains most of the things, is just kind of there for that. She's just there to make exposition and explain all the science stuff behind all the fantasy elements of Thor. However, despite the one-dimensional characters, that doesn't mean they're boring, they can be rather fun sometimes, and they help move the plot forward so that Thor's art can be more satisfying and Loki seem a lot more evil and sinister. Because, yes, it is true that movies can have a lot of characters, but that doesn't mean they all get development, they're mostly there just to fill a role in the story. If there's one thing I gotta criticize Thor about is the fact that the fantasy elements don't play a larger role enough. Like I said, the fantasy elements are not the point of the movie, but the movie could have been a lot better had they did a little bit more world building. I mean, they do do shield stuff and that's always world building, and it's not as intrusive as Iron Man 2. Despite that, it could have helped if there were much more fantasy elements, rather than just always having to be about science and magic is just science we don't understand yet. If you go that route, you end up making your movie a lot boring rather than fun, even though you're supposed to be having fun. But at the end of the day, that's just my silly little opinion gripe about the movie, and aside from that, the movie does work rather well. The story is told decently, the characters all play their roles neatly, and Thor and Loki are the most interesting characters in the movie. They did a good job with those characters, yep. 
because, you know, they're kind of the most important characters if you're gonna have them feature in the Avengers. One thing I'd like to point out is just how gorgeous the movie looks. All of the costume, all of the CGI, all the special effects, it looks well done. And I gotta say, the first Thor movie is honestly the most beautiful looking Thor movie. I don't know what it is, but it seems like future Thor movies don't make Asgard as majestic and beautiful. They all just kind of look dull and stuff. Maybe it's because as the MCU progresses and they're finding their own style, it makes the rest of the more fantasy elements of Thor look even duller than they should be. It could also be that since this is the first movie, they put the most effort and so they made it more majestic than any other Thor movie. I don't know, I kind of miss this Asgard. This Asgard that actually feels like it's a fantasy and majestical realm that humans can barely comprehend. And that kind of seems to be the running thing with all of these Phase 1 movies. The Phase 1 movies, you can tell, are the early versions of the MCU because they're clearly trying to find their ground, they're trying to find their own style, and because of that, each movie feels a lot different. The first two Iron Man movies are definitely that sci-fi, billionaire, playboy, the philanthropist kind of style, while The Incredible Hulk is a dark, edgy sci-fi film, it's also dramatic and stuff, while Thor is a much more fantastical film, they all feel different, and I gotta say, it kinda makes Phase 1 MCU films a bit underrated. And that's what I feel like the first Thor movie is. Sure, the movie isn't perfect, but people are acting like it's the most boring movie ever, and while yes, the fantasy elements aren't as prominent, the movie tells a rather good story, and I feel like people are only focusing on the fantasy elements, and not realizing that the non-fantasy elements also play a bigger role in Thor's arc. If people can see that more often, then maybe they wouldn't think Thor is as boring as they think it is, because trust me, this movie is pretty entertaining that I give it a 7 out of 10 stars. It's definitely an underrated film.